yeah. we did a run we did a run to montreal and back which was dope and then we did a run to um to play fest and back mm. uh and that was like six months into being a band and that was that was it everything else was just playing regionally we're really trying to play chicago we have so many friends there we're just it's got to be the right the right you haven't played chicago yet that's like right next to you i know i just haven't (laughs) haven't, uh seriously three hours you went played uh montreal and down into florida and shit but uh chicago man we'll be in scotland we'll be in scotland Scotland by (laughs) october but yeah chicago will be like Welcome to the 133rd episode of the cast that ends creation. I'm your host Chris Jang. This is a show where I interview bands and public figures from the Mathcore and Mathcore adjacent community. Uh, my guest today dropped their debut album, American Anxiety, last month. Welcome in Wounded Touch. How's it going, guys? Hey, I feel like we're having audio issues. Just one second. I got to see if it's playing through the stream. Oh, never mind. Someone's in chat. It says, only hear me. Fantastic. So uh, y'all have been muted this whole time. Awesome. One second. It's totally on my end. Uh, I updated drivers on my audio interface today, and it does not like them, but I thought I had it fixed. We could be saying anything. We could just be like... <laughs> okay, now try it. Hello? <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, there it is. All right, awesome. So uh, we just missed like uh, all that uh, content, so that's awesome. Um. <laughs> we, at least we didn't take too much, yeah. <laughs> There we go. The burning wind, uh, we uh, burning yeah. wind flexi. It was really fast, and uh, we were planning on doing it as a free thing, and it ended up being our only release in 2020 because of COVID. <laughs> Onto the record, yeah. <laughs> just to catch up. I think I think I do have my intro. So uh, I mean, this kind of explains what just happened. Uh, that the audio interface is all fucked up. So yeah, like uh, I guess we should just go over your names real quick and what y'all do in the band. Yeah, can we start with that? Yeah, yeah I'm Nick. I'm uh, uh, Mike. I uh, play guitar. I'm Jeremy uh, Drums. All righty. So, yeah, we didn't really didn't. Do that. Uh, we were just coming. Record. So, uh, I, what was the. What's different this time around on your record? Musically, um, I think it was us just kind of not really trying to be something. I think we were kind of like. <clears throat> I think we had a very real existential moment. At least I did when we recorded it, especially writing in quarantine. There was this real idea of, man, our show's going to come back. Uh, is Smart Punk going to want to really do something else with us? This might be the only thing we get to do. If this is the last record any of us really get to do doing this kind of music. And, I, you know, that seems so overdramatic and hyperbolic now. But at the time, it felt very real and just like going, what would I want to do? And I, I, that's how I approached it was like, OK, if this is the last record I ever did, what would I want to do? Instead of like, what's what? What are the kids like now? <laughs> like. <laughs> um at least for me that's what it uh what it seemed like i think it was nice too because i feel like we all got more time on this to write together versus the ep was uh you, you know it was uh just a quicker process the first time and then this time i feel like we kind of knew each other better with how we all write together and it made mm-hmm. it a, probably a better experience the second okay. time around so learn each other's mannerisms and like what they what they like and don't like and i see that yeah, yeah. Y'all i'm gonna turn some lights on it here <laughs> just realize i'm sitting in the dark <laughs> uh so y'all, y'all put this out on smart punk i saw you also did your ep on smart punk uh how did you hook up with him uh, uh a friend of ours <clears throat> named Nick who was jamming with us at the time he really was just kind of filling in and helping us do pre-pro and we didn't have a basis and he was like well how about I just kind of kick it around for a minute and you know him tweeting about it they uh they hit him up and said "Ooh, I really like this and um I think they were I don't know what it was it was just everything lined up at the right moment they said can we put this out on the EP and um you know, it was like, oh yeah. I mean, it's we like, were all fuck yeah, dude, put it on a label, I, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were, I think it just started as like, it was just going to be this fun little EP. And then it just kind of kept growing into stuff and we kept doing stuff and kept having bigger opportunities. And it was just like, I think it just became like a thing where it was going to be, it wasn't going to be a financial disaster to do a record for us. I think they were, you know what I mean? Like, I know that sounds funny, but I, for a label, I think when they're like, oh, this actually might be mutually beneficial let's do it 
and then yeah. just kind of going from there. Well, I saw that y'all did really well. Like, uh, I don't know if y'all have looked at your Spotify numbers recently, but y'all are fucking killing it. It's nuts. And I saw you got on like I appreciate it. Brooklyn yeah, Vegan thanks. and Not Fest. Yeah. And I- I'm sure there were some other ones that I missed. So, like y'all got like really good like pr- promo placement and stuff too. Like, I feel like we just got some really more. Y'all. We're gonna be in Metal Hammer this month, Damn, um, nice. which is which is wild to me. Um, yeah, it's that's true. Like crazy. Man, crazy. Yeah. Like for real. We're gonna be in a couple UK publications, which is really cool because actually we haven't said it yet. But we're gonna we're gonna be doing a tour in the UK at the end of the year. Oh, so shit. it's really cool to be in all these publications. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Yep, there it is. Fucking sick. <laughs> yep. Oh, damn. Um, I remember Smart Punk from like way back in the day, or at least I heard the name. But I looked them up and it looked like they started in like 2015. But I I swear to God, it was a thing back in like 2006 they or whatever. Did. They did. They just no, it was late. Yeah. So was, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel they, like it was a publication. Was that it? It was a publication and and an actual record store. And then they did, you know, they've done distro, but they always did like exclusives and stuff right. like that. And then huh. they basically opened their own, like, oh, this is our label of our own exclusive releases okay. um, in, in 2015. But I think they like tried doing that um, like a decade before that. And it would, and they, it didn't, um, I think it kind of got shelved and they brought it back. Okay. Huh. I so. just remember hearing it from way back then, but then, uh, all this stuff in like 20 it started in 2015 i was like what the hell i couldn't this? say enough good things about them um which is a first for me i've, I've been on I've well you been say bad things days. about everybody then or yeah <laughs> yeah no i just uh i've been on some other labels in the past and had for, i was in a band that was on earache records in like 2009 and it was the Ooh. worst experience ever and um and they were a huge label or are a huge label but it was just right. like I had experience with all these different labels and these guys have just been, I, I can't say enough good things about them and what they've been willing to do, do for us and help us with. They were the ones who got us on furnace fest and everything. So it's just like, it's been awesome. That's fucking tight. That's so cool. That, uh, that worked out well for y'all. So uh, yeah, as far as the music out, goes, out, Matt, out, Alex, yeah. Uh, as far as the music goes, I feel like y'all did a fantastic job with this. It's not like reinventing the wheel or anything, but y'all are so fucking solid. And like what you do is just so good. Like this Thank is Thank you. This is like up there with album of the year, you know, uh vibes for me. Like uh, it's at least top 5 right now. Damn, like, thanks, some, Chris. This is some good Damn, shit. That's uh, really good shit. That's awesome. Yeah, you thank you. Thank you. Hell yeah. Uh but uh, yeah, uh, what are the influences going into this? You, you kind of have like uh, a diverse sound with like really heavy breakdowns and stuff, but then you have more like clean vocals. You got some like weird uh, uh, guitar filters and stuff throughout here. Um, so what's going in? What's going into the sound? Man, I it's just a whole mess of things. Like I don't know. I feel like anytime Jeremy and I like got together or whatever, and we just like jam through all sorts of just all sorts of stuff, man. I, I can't even really begin to explain like uh, how many genres oh, yeah. that we fucked and whatever else. So it's like so many different influences. Well, I remember together. when we started jamming, we even listed off like some three. And I remember like one of the first three was like I talking to Mike. I was like, you know, I want to do something that's like premonitions of war with some girls and some some pulling teeth sprinkled in there. But it was like um for me, I know, like, for me, uh, we get a lot compared to a lot of modern metalcore bands, but, like, the majority of the band's in its 30s. So what's funny when some of our people have said, like, oh, it sounds so authentic. I'm like, well, it's because we were going to shows at the time that a lot of the metalcore that is, like, cool now was happening. We just were 14 and we couldn't play shit. So now <laughs> I feel like we're writing music that we wanted to when we were 14. Um, I know for me, like a, a lot of my influences on this for this band specifically is like uh, throats, uh, curl up and die, and uh, stuff like um, breathe or resist and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where I approach some things. And then Big Destroyer is a big a big one for me for sure. Breathe or resist and uh, converge. You know, Zayo, all those bands are just like bands I grew up listening to and that had a huge lasting effect and and then just kind of now after so many years and come together with uh you know all the rest of the uh, rest of them and just having the diverse influences it kind of i feel like that's where 
we're led to for sure. Hell yeah. Um, so you are mentioning uh, Michael. You're mentioning you and Jeremy getting together, writing stuff. Is, is that how the writing process starts? Like you two are figuring stuff out, or how, how does this all work? It, man, it's it's it can go either way. It can be me or Kyle getting together, and then sending stuff over to Jeremy. It can be Jeremy sending me a beat. You know, I think Killing of a Year was written around something that, that Jeremy like was like messing with at the time. Um, it, it's yeah. I mean, it's we're always can consistent or constantly finding new ways to just make shit up. I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. think it yeah. stays. Uh, it definitely stays interesting because I know some stuff we've done too is because of ideas that Nick had, and then we kind of just rode off of whatever. You know, maybe. Yeah, I've had like beats, but it's like I don't play an instrument, so I'll be like, "All right, I got this this part where it's like Jeremy would be going, doo, 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 and everybody trying to go. All right, I'll make sense of that fucking you know onomatopoeia coming from you know you impersonating instruments. So sometimes there's some ideas like that. Like yeah, normally, Michael's like, choo, 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 choo. an answer came around. <laughs> so yeah. You know, it's kind of like Nick would just kind of boom, 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 bing, bang, bong, like shit along. And we'd be like, okay, like I, I see that. And yeah, dude, I have it, a, it, it uh, works in my memos on my phone. I just have files of me making guitar noises. I try to remember uh, uh, songs and stuff <laughs> whenever I'm just out. So I totally get that, man. <laughs> yeah, that's actually how Steamroll 100 practice. <laughs> <laughs> like our, our last man, we get together. Oh and yeah, guy and just go. Oh no, dude. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, so yeah, it's yeah. Uh, so uh, let's talk about vocal our lyrics and stuff real quick. But first, those high screeches, man. Holy shit, how are you doing that? Thanks. Um, that's like kill your throat. Trying like, to think like it's actually the easiest. It's been the easiest on my throat of anything I've done. Before. Really? It's, okay. it, uh, which is a big reason I really, uh, it's it's really why I leaned into it a lot on the record too. Cause I was like, okay, this will be a lot easier to do live. Um, <laughs> I usually lose my voice. I, I used to have, I, I used to be really big on the technique and like theory. And I just somewhere along the way started throwing it out and, you know, really have to pull myself back sometimes to keep my voice. Um, yeah, I feel that I, I go out on like these short runs it. and I like ruin my voice the first couple nights and just be regretting it the rest of the time. <laughs> yeah. Night show number four. You're like, Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this, the screeching the, I, like that vocal approach, I think is really like uh, influenced by like a, a, a mixture of like some, some scrams and then like, uh, like the, uh, the pig destroy record uh, terrifier. Okay, like it's somewhere on that. (laughs) That's awesome. That's like that's my favorite album by them too. It's like actually one of my all time favorites. Uh, He's definitely got a vocal effect on that one though. It's not. It's not real. (laughs) The high pitch thing. So you don't try to do it without the vocal effect. Okay. Right. That's me trying to just emulate that. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, But yeah, I didn't find any lyrics. So what are the lyrics about? Oh, okay. Like y'all should post them up on Bandcamp when y'all get a chance. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll have to because it's you know the vinyl's held up; it's all in there. Um, whenever it, when it ships out later at the end of the month, um, it ranges. I mean, like uh, some of it, like I said, I, like the title track, uh, I wrote the lyrics to that having COVID because I remember it was brand it was March of 2020. I caught it, you know, working on an ambulance and like um, we didn't know anything about it, and I remember like being sick as hell in bed, not knowing anything about it. Like people like saying, Hey, you know, let, let us know whatever we can do for your family. And like, like I'm dying. And then like, as I'm sick with it, watching family and friends post on Facebook about how the whole thing was a hoax. It was all fake. It didn't really exist. And I'm like, I remember thinking like, if I die from this shit, are they going to like acknowledge it's real or that I was in on the hoax? Like did George Soros pay me to kill myself so that I could sell this hoax. Um, so, uh, I remember um, wondering that and that some of it, and then the track uh, with Trevor uh, wrote about, you know, working on an ambulance. Um, so there's a lot of personal stuff. Uh, the, the two tracks that have the singing in them are centered around uh, my, my best friend passed away in 2020 um, amid lockdown as well. 
And um, so there was a, a lot of it is a lot of personal reflection for half of it. Then the other half was like very generalized themes, like about false, uh, false sincerity. Like when people, when people pass away and everybody comes out of the woodworks to offer a false sympathy and just, you know, uh, metaphorically thinking of it as a hand on the shoulder and breaking all the fingers of that hand, like just a lot of, uh, it leans a lot, a lot into uh, metaphor on some of it and some of it's about uh, a little more literal experience, especially all contained within, within 2020 when we, when we wrote it. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your friend passing away, but uh, you, you work on an ambulance? Like, but in the I do. Of COVID, I work, that's I, fucking I, crazy, dude. I work, uh, I work for a major city fire department and I, I, I'm a medic. So that's, uh, that's awesome. <clears throat> so I was one of the first people to get it. <laughs> it was like, you know, didn't really know much about it that's at crazy. the time. That's, that's like what the middle track is. So the middle track, the interlude is, uh, me. It's not a sample. It's me giving a radio report. Um, it's not me recording it work. I just in the studio wrote, we didn't know what to do with it. <clears throat> and the, and because the track before it is about desensit uh, desensitization to violence on an ambulance. And the, the next, the track after it is the title track about COVID. I wrote <clears throat> uh, about having COVID early on the middle track abridging them is me uh doing a rate a radio report on an ambulance of one of the first patients i could remember who we had that went into cardiac arrest from covid so it's Damn. it's not me literally work recording i just had to remember it and go how did that go and really the the fear and not knowing it and being on it being on the truck with the big respirator calling it into the hospital and like that's what that is it's not a sample it's just me so there's there's even some themes like that uh, on the record as well dan do you must have seen some crazy shit being on an Oh, I do. Well, <laughs> fun fact, yeah. real quick too. Like when Nick Nick drove straight from like a night shift after working in Detroit and drove straight to Chicago to record. And I went to give him a hug, and he stopped me and he goes, "Dude, don't don't touch me." And I was like, I'm like "What's up?" He's like, "Dude, I have somebody else's fluids all over me. Just don't touch me." <laughs> I had to go. You go, you go change man for sure right yeah. jesus christ i arrived I, I, I got to chicago i drove from down, downtown all the like you know the six hours to chicago in uniform right after punching out at 7 a.m and had to change so everybody's like oh come here man. i'm like i'm like trust me just let me go clean up and then we'll all, we'll all hug yeah they're like never, never forget it i'll never forget it <laughs> god damn dude <laughs> uh so yeah, you were just talking about recording. Let's uh, dive into that. Uh, it was recorded by Andy Nelson at Bricktop Recording, and you got it mastered by Scott Hall. What the fuck? Yep. That's badass, yep. dude. Damn. Yeah. Scott Scott got brought in. Um, uh, I'm I'm good friends with Rorick from Cloud Rat, who's they're all really good friends with Pig Destroyer. Oh, they're awesome. So when I was looking for mastering, I was like, you know what? I, I fucking want Scott to master this. He masters all the Pig Destroyer stuff, and he mastered like you know, some, some pulling teeth records and trap them records. I was like, mm -hmm. and then he roar cooked it up and he was like, yeah, I'll do it for you guys. And it was like for, uh, it, it, he was super thorough with it too. He, he sent multiple masters. He said, you know what? I'm, I want to redo this. I want to, I could like do better. And he was super thorough and actually excited about doing it. So that was a cool experience on top of doing it with Andy, which is, I, I don't ever want to record with anybody else. Like Andy is just the man. Oh, oh yeah, he's like yeah. one of those kinds that one of those people that'll like push you guys to get like your best your best takes and stuff like that then. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, Andy's the man. Hell yeah. I'm not I'm not as he, familiar he, with like Andy. I was like second guessing some things. He would just like, No, you were right the second time or the first time or he's like or try it this way. He was he was real smooth with it. I'd appreciate Andy a lot. Hell yeah. Um and then you got Trevor I don't know how to say his last name is Bernad, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. How how did you get him on? You you just call him up and uh, got him to a feature, or you like uh, know him somehow? Tre Trevor and I have a lot of uh, all of us have a lot of mutual friends, um, and I think Trevor really started following us on social media too. He he's known some of our other bands. We all go to the same venues in Detroit uh, before he moved out to New York, but um, he started following us because the guy we started drumming with uh, first before Jeremy came aboard was Corey Grady the drummer on Unhollowed for oh. Black Dahlia and from Premonitions of War. So Corey was jamming with us and he posted oh, a video. It was the first time he'd jam in like 10 years. So Trevor went, oh, fuck, that's sick. 
started following us. And when Corey couldn't do it, um, you know, Trevor was still super supportive and got really into the band. And he's been like a big proponent of us from uh, the get go. Uh, one of our best shows, uh, they were playing an off date on their uh, Black Label Society tour in, in Michigan. And they were, they were just going to be done with some locals. And I said, and I just messaged and tried to shoot our shot. I said, hey, man, what would, what would someone have to do to like play that or talk to him? He goes, oh, you're on. Don't worry. And he, he said, I'll call the venue you guys are playing. And it was Black Dahlia and three locals. And it was packed. It was sold out. That's it was fucking awesome, awesome dude. It was, what the it was fuck? such a dope show. Yeah, that was that was so, one, of, uh, one of the better shows I feel like we've done. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> That's so sick, dude. Jesus Christ. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Trevor was all about doing it. And then he was in town. So we were able to actually, we chose that as the first single for the record because i because when he was in town we were shooting the video we're like well then why don't we do it for this song because trevor will be here we can get him in the video and that and that's how we decided the first single so i actually have to charge my phone now so i'm just gonna move real quick <laughs> you good you good i'll stay with y'all <laughs> uh hey stay with us so um we got the cover up on stream now uh who did the art for you guys uh luna I don't, know, I don't know how to pronounce her uh yeah I Mar last name. Lu luna's from uh she's a tattoo artist from romania oh, she lives shit. in romania and our, our our guitarist kyle uh is a big fan of uh art he so he follows a lot of artists on instagram and he just was all about her stuff and some of her abstract paintings and we had this idea of doing like a uh a manga style cover so he hit her up and he sent her all the lyrics to the record and said, you know, whatever you want to do in this pseudo direction, go for it. And she hand drew it by pencil and colored it in by pencil. And the whole thing's a scan. She, she, uh, other, other than the, you know, text, but the actual art, she uh, hand drew and hand colored herself and just scanned it. And uh, we gave her very little direction other than the lyrics and said, pick, do, do what the, whatever this inspires in you. And that's what she came up with. And we were like, so stoked on it dude yeah it looks really fucking good like it's an awesome thanks it's thank like you, the kind of like you. iconic kind of thing like it, it's really badass thank you um and then you did three videos a uh, lyric video visualizer and a really cool performance vid uh we're gonna be showing the uh performance vid if that didn't get messed up oh there we go boom Alrighty, so uh, yeah, this is excerpts from a violent thesis. This is actually the one with Trevor Stranad, I guess, is what we landed on. How you pronounce it? Um, Stranad, yeah. I assume I've never like said, "Hey man, how do I say your last name?" Yeah, you never so asked. Oh, that would have been my first question. Like, hey man, how, how do I how do I say that? Um, <laughs> what's the video about? Um, honestly, we uh, I just I these guys kind of because I you know I work in video production too. So I shot it with my friend Alex and I just had this idea and I said, Hey, you guys okay with me just getting really weird with this? And they said, yeah. And I just really wanted to rip off the end of the movie bug. So that's just totally, um, what it is. If you've never seen it, it's a William Friedkin film, um, who did the exorcist and it ends, it culminates in this big moment where, uh, this guy who's, um, who, who's having some delusions believes he's been, uh, he said the government placed bugs inside of him. And he covers this hotel room with um, tin foil, and it's lit by bug zappers, and he sets himself on fire. So totally, it's totally us aping the end of that movie. But these guys were all about it, and um, just watched and it recently for the first time. That's a pretty awesome movie. Not gonna lie, it's so it's so wild. Yeah, it's so. it's pretty pretty crazy. <laughs> well, and, it's like, and that blue, like the just the way the blue. In everything, way everything shot too, it reminds us of the Martyr like AD video too. So, oh yeah, yeah. which is one of my. We wanted to color. My, oh, I oh, vaguely know what you're talking about. I kind of remember shit. seeing a video by them that was like this back in the day. Like it's a really old song, right? That you're thinking of, it's the Martyr AD. American Hollow, the American Hollow. Dude, that's, that's the name of the song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah that's uh, that's an all-time favorite. So that was another thing. We were like, okay, well, let's do it this way and let's make it look like an old Frost Kill Ferret era. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we all kind of yeah. loved that video, you know, and it's just like, all right, you know, 
Yeah, do something like that. Yeah. It's like, fuck Work yeah, out. let me go get a whole bunch of bugs and just throw them around all over the place. Yep. Destroy a <laughs> piano that I had I, to carry yeah, out. I still can't believe you had a cricket problem and you never said anything to him. <laughs> like, that still blows my mind. Dude, because I was so focused on getting rid of the piano, because, you know, by the end of the video, we chop it up. Pianos are heavy, man. Like, I like yeah. 600 pounds of steel inside of this thing. So I had to cut it up into pieces, carry it out, and uh, I didn't know what to do with it, so we burned it <laughs> in my front yard because <laughs> we had no idea what to do with pieces of, of a piano. So that's it. Guy on the fire department burned a piano just to get rid of it. So, <laughs> yeah. What do you do with the metal bits, though? I guess you could just fit, that'll fit all that in the trash. Burned it, burned it down to metal, and, uh, you know, I live out in sticks, so there's always people trying to scrap. So people picked it up and... Y'all got scrap? Yeah. They just <laughs> took it, so it was great. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, you said Trevor was in that video though, right? The one we just played? Yep. What what was he doing? I didn't notice anything. He did he sings uh, his part. Oh, was he on the thing and I just didn't notice? Okay, after. okay. Yeah. Yeah, screaming into the bug zapper. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um yeah, we got a random question. We ask everybody, what do you put on your hot dogs? Mustard and celery salt. Okay, I like that. I've had more sure. people say celery salt recently, and I'm starting to, I'm getting interested. I want to find some. Big in Chicago. Um, yeah, I that's know, good. Uh, hot dogs. Hot dogs. Uh, that was a staple thing. The first, I hated hot dogs. And when somebody had me try it that one time, mustard, uh, a pickle spear. No, that's the other one. Not relish. A, a pickle spear, mustard, and celery salt. That's mine. I think yeah, I just, uh, Nick on that it. one. That's pretty much how I do it. Really? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike, you're on the spot. What do you do? Man, I don't even think the hot dogs are around anymore. That's sad. Uh, hot dogs? Yeah, you said that hot I, dogs I aren't around anymore? Hot dogs in Chicago. Oh. <laughs> hot dogs. Oh, is that the name uh, of a restaurant? Hot Dugs, and he serves hot dogs. Yeah, dude, it was, it was, like, it was, it was a, Yeah, it was a big spot. I, like it was like on like a travel channel or some sort of food channel. Like somebody, somebody traveled there like specifically, and it was like, oh, like yeah. And but yeah, dude, hot dogs, man. I don't even remember the last time I ate a hot dog. Honestly. Well, if you got one uh, in front of you, man, what are you putting on it? Man, some chili, some ketchup, some mustard. Well, those are the onions. It's probably yeah, it. onion, onion for sure. Yeah, I totally got that one. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Do you like chili too? No. <laughs> all, it's all good. <laughs> These were our most thorough answers to any question you've asked. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so you you guys have mentioned um uh y'all. Have- Jim the guy from like Premonitions of War and uh, the old Black Dahlia Murder Drummer and stuff like that. Uh, is there like a huge scene up there in Michigan then? A uh, scene? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about oh, like, yeah. all these bands and stuff? Oh, I didn't yeah, know man. Michigan yeah, was like a hub for this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I Honestly, you know, you only really hear about a lot of the hardcore, but like um, there's all these different like sub sub communities and stuff like that. And like there was a big big metalcore scene in the early 2000s like you especially because you had you had black dahlia but then you had like for dire life's sake and you had um let it die and all these all these bands then you had all the bands in like ohio like premonitions of war and all these bands mid 2000s stuff which was you know at, the, at that point i'd have been like 14 so i was just coming in right when black dahlia signed to metal blade so these bands were all starting to grow up and go away but at the same time you had see next Tuesday for the fallen dreams and all of them getting signed right when we were all coming out of high school. So they were like the bands we were all playing with and opening for. There was so much, but there was a lot of really good, really good tech techie, like what, what would now be death core. But at the time we did bands, that sounded like glass casket and stuff like that, like at that point. So, um, and there's still a really good, like, metal uh community too i wish there was a bigger power violence and like grind scene here there was a mince grind scene but it's i feel like it's kind of moved more into ohio so is it still like a strong community and stuff now like i have a lot of bands out there and such yeah. I feel like a lot of bands in michigan like kind of broke up during the pandemic mm. i think they like changed a lot of things for some people but 
you know i i definitely a lot of new bands sprouted out of it yeah well i know y'all have like possession 1981s up there with y'all um dead hour noise i'm pretty sure is also from michigan so dead y'all hour have, like, been around for yeah. a second bit of like yeah. math core stuff happening up there it's pretty cool yeah. oh yeah dead hour noise has been uh jamming for a hot minute and then and then there was a big uh venue like sanctuary is pretty much the spot in detroit right now uh, which our friend Maxwell runs which is where we did our record release um there was a more underground spot in ann arbor which is kind of mi- middle of the state and uh it's at the university of michigan's frat house it was called metal frat and they did like for a while that's where everything went that's where like i just remember like seeing mammoth grinder there and like seeing harm's way for the first time and like just insane stuff went there and it's it you know it went to the wayside as everybody grew up and then they, they you know they were still doing stuff like ostrock and like gift from god and stuff played there too but like and then it, everybody got older and now i don't th- i don't think they do any shows now but hmm. <clears throat> so just uh, a lot of things in flux because of like covid and shit like that then i got you yeah michigan's a dope place to play you just gotta make sure there's nothing else going on there's too much you just gotta make sure you're not playing on the same night as like 20 other shows right it was right. really uh, there's, so- yeah, there's, a, there's always so much going on at once <laughs> so you know I it's, got you. it's very very busy <clears throat> hey that's better than it being dead up there so uh, there's that right yeah i remember those days as a kid like you being going up the sticks and you rent spending 900 dollars to rent a via an old vfw hall so that you and your friends two bad bands could play to your 15 friends so <laughs> Oh, and no. it sounds like a good time actually I don't know. it was but <laughs> it, it was a good time when i was 15 it would be a good time as a 33 year old man right like, right <laughs> so what's next for you guys like uh you got any uh touring plans or anything like that uh we're waiting to announce a bunch of shows we're actually announcing a show tomorrow <clears throat> which is uh us uh, so, uh with uh cloud rat and shock narcotic that's gonna be okay. dope um, okay we're playing uh we're there's some big ones we can't say yet that we're announcing there's um a couple uh festivals that we're speaking with but we don't know if it's being confirmed or not yet and then uh we're gonna do uh 10 day or eight days in the uk in october and then just some stuff around that okay okay so nothing like crazy for the u.s then no tours or anything like that nothing crazy uh so we we were uh a couple friends and some other bands reached out to us but uh, about doing some legs around the U.S., but it got to the point where, we're, where we, if we could only take so much time off work, we're like, well, do we do that or do we just wait it and uh, wait and do these couple festivals and the U.K.? So that's kind of how it, it broke down for us. Have y'all done any runs in the U.S. yet? Even like back in 2019 and stuff? <clears throat> Did we? Mm-hmm. Uh, just the short Florida. Like a couple days. Yeah, it was a couple days. Oh, too fast. When we went too fast. fast to back. Yeah. So y'all just like we fuck did. it, we'll just do our first tour in the UK. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we did that little thing in Canada too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. We did a run. We did a run to Montreal and back, which was dope. And then we did a run to um, to play fest and back. Mm. Uh, and that was like six months into being a band. And that was that was it. Everything else was just playing regionally. We're really trying to play Chicago. We have so many friends there. We're just just got to be the right. Right Y'all thing, haven't played you know? Chicago yet. That's like right next to you. I know. I just haven't. <laughs> haven't uh... Seriously, three okay. hours. Away. Yeah, you, you went and played uh, Montreal and down into Florida and shit, but uh, Chicago, man, yeah, that's we'll the be, elusive we'll be one. In Scotland. <laughs> we'll be in Scotland by October, but yeah, Chicago will be like we just we, we just played Ohio for the first time over the summer. Yeah. <laughs> so. You're like in London. You're like, man, I just wish I could play Chicago, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, next door. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what's the best show you guys have played so far? Oh, you can all have different answers and stuff too. It doesn't all have to be like a consensus. Furnace like Fest, six. yeah. For, uh, yeah. The first, the I kind of figured that was going to be the the majority answer was Furnace Fest. Like, I'm not sure you could really do that. That yeah, yeah that's 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 Black Dahlia, Dahlia probably. Or yeah, that or Black Dahlia. Oh yeah, the show with Black Dahlia would have been fucking sick. How did y'all get uh, totally on board with uh, Furnace Fest? Smart, honestly, in complete transparency, Smart Punk's a sponsor. And they said, okay. hey, uh, can, can we get our hardcore band on this? And they said, last minute said, well, we can get them on the kickoff opening 
you know, for remembering there was one time thing we were like, uh, perfect. I, there were like, I actually would have like given the choice between opening like the main day or that I would have, I think still picked what we played. Yeah, it yeah, seems like that might be the better choice because it's like less bands on and stuff like that. More people. Yeah, We'd probably been was, there to see you guys for that. For we were the first the band of the entire weekend, and we still played to like seven hundred something people, and still Jesus had, Christ, and still still had people moshing by the end of our set. We were literally playing as doors opened, so we people had by song two were finally starting to shuffle in, but by the end of the set, it was fucking packed. It was great, and it was. And then, and then the whole set, Pete from Remembering Never was just talking about us in between songs multiple times and saying like, oh, my favorite band of the whole weekend is Converge and Wounded Touch, which of course had Mike and I who've been friend, uh, fans of them forever, like choked up. That was surreal. Dude, that's fucking oh, tight. What the hell? That's so crazy. It was so dope. Yeah. So that's yeah. my fan of that. Like, oh, yeah. Well, it was cool reconvening with Pete too, because we played with Ether Coven when they came through. That's right. Too. And, and that's, you know, and just kind of hanging and talking out with him or, and just in comparison, he's just a real nice dude. So, I mean, Pete, me, me and Pete is a very nice Pete. <laughs> us, but, you know. So what's the worst <laughs> show you guys have played? Uh, with this band or ever? Uh, I mean, if you don't have a good one for this band, we, we can, we can stretch it to uh, ever. I don't, I don't really have a really openly bad one for this band. Um, That's a good thing. That's I can think question. of one. I can think of one in my deathcore band in, in uh, on tour in high school playing and uh, to literally one person. Nice. And they and we sat on the ground because halfway through the set, I'm like, I'm tired. We all sat down. The kid bought a shirt. Uh, we gave it to him for free. And the venue paid us three dollars. <laughs> nice. So $3. that was you getting but that death court money, man. Still had fun. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So yeah, I don't know. That that might be it, but I feel like I still had fun. I feel like that even shows like that aren't like the worst ones. It's the ones that like you play terribly and you're miserable and you don't get paid. Just those are like those are the horrible ones. But I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. It's so hard to pick. Like not, not yeah. Just after <laughs> there's so many bad ones. There's, there's so many shows in different bands, but Jeremy, just, you have some good ones from Central America. I I, I <laughs> guess what? I'll I guess I'll just pick this one as an answer. I uh, um I didn't all I brought was my uh symbols and I think I brought my pedal or snare no i think i brought my i can't remember i brought two different things because just flying it over there and they they said they had a, a kit and stand set up ready for me this was in uh i want to say guatemala and um show up and the stands were literally cinder blocks and it was just a snare laying flat on it so the wires were just crushed by the cinder block and i just had to <laughs> play it on it and just make it work and um it, it was so it was so just like barely a a full kit aside from that wait and, so like they had stands for you to put the symbols on or was it just like cinder block they were, they were like, the the, on? like very beginner kit like the symbol just kind of lays on it but it doesn't really work like they were about that quality and you know like i could use them <laughs> but then they didn't have a snare stand and uh the the bass drum head was was uh there was a hole in it so the whole time i'm hitting it i'm just hitting this whole this hole in the center of it so it just you couldn't hear it you know it's just dead <laughs> what, and, what what band is this uh this was a band called um Thin skin. It was an old hard thin skin. It was a okay. short lived hardcore project I was part of. But y'all made it, it down to Guatemala. Guatemala. It, yeah. It it's was, just like uh, this band, right? Weird. First tour just, is in the UK. Started, and then it was super <laughs> quick. We just got like some cool offers, and um, there's an opportunity to go there. We went to, uh, I think it was like eight days, Colombia. 
Costa Rica, um, Guatemala, El Salvador. That might have actually been El Salvador and um, Honduras. And um, it was uh, that was the main show that was sketchy as far as like the equipment. Um, most of the shows were like, well, isn't Honduras so like the kidnap capital of the world or some shit? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I feel was, like it'd be sketchy for other reasons, but it, yeah, no, that was a that was a wild, wild place for sure. God damn, um, dude, that's crazy. That's a wild experience. What the fuck? It, yeah, no, it was that was pretty nuts. <laughs> what <laughs> what was the okay? So tell me more about this run. Like, what was the best show that y'all played? Like, did people come out to see it? Oh, that tour. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, most of the shows were pretty successful. Um, I don't really know how people knew about it other than we, uh, we had some contacts there already. So they, they had like some people to kind of like stay with us and get people like hyped up and, you know, like people just like actually going to shows, even if they don't know what it is, they right. just touring band, different country. I've, I've heard it's like that in, um. I've heard like uh, the guys in ACX DC said that Indonesia was like that too, where it was oh, like yeah. it didn't matter. It was just like, oh, there's a show tonight. Sick. Yeah, yeah they people, don't get a whole people lot of just love there. supporting, and it's uh, that aspect of it was super cool. That's awesome, um, man. Dude, that is yes, awesome. most of it was was pretty positive, awesome. Just like lots of kids hanging out and you know buying merch and just having a good time and that was uh that was pretty cool that was um i think i was like 21 so that was like seven or eight years ago oh damn oh yeah because of the passport <laughs> it was, <laughs> figured that figured that out the other day <laughs> um yeah because we're digging out passports ago. for the uk right now mm. okay uh who are y'all touring with in the uk are y'all just like trying to do a run on your own or uh, some friends in a band called Geist, who, um, it basically the UK is still all about, do you remember in 2012 when like death wish was all HM2 driven, like hardcore and it was super like influenced, uh, like, like very influential acts like cursed and trapped them were kind of driving the sound. Yeah. The UK still has that awesome scene of, of, um, people being really into cursed and people being really into rise and fall. So imagine a band that's that kind of do doom and gloomy hardcore with like thrash drumming. But my friend Ian who sings for them, he just reminds me of like, it just sounds like infest, like power violence vocals over HM2 driven, like melodic hardcore. It's fucking that great. Dope. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're awesome. So we're doing it with them. Nice. All righty. Um, uh, Michael, you got any uh bad show stories, or uh, you're not gonna be able to beat South America? No, no, I won't. And I've been thinking about it for a second too. But the uh, the one I guess that pops up, I won't mention any names either. But the one that pops up is is like one of my first bands that like I actually started touring with. And um, there was the there was these kids. They were from like downstate, and like they kept being like, "Hey, like come out and come out and like play, come out and play." And we're like yeah okay like you know and we always there was always some sort of excuse that we had and then finally we were like okay yeah let's let's do it and so you know we get we get down there finally like they're they're all excited and stuff and like the first band goes on and like it, it's it was just like a cover band you know they all had like their ties and like studded belts and like i was just like okay all right fine <laughs> <laughs> and then our drummer ended up getting so drunk he passed out on the bench before our set. Nice. And, and yeah, so and it's like you know, and it's like it's cool, like you know, have a couple of drinks, loosen up, you know, be in the pocket. But like, I mean, there was just no off switch. It was just right, right into blackout. And <laughs> so like, we get up there, we're trying to play. We we ended up cutting the set more than like half short because he's dropping his sticks saying he doesn't know what he's doing and uh fucking after after the set like me and the other guitar player were outside or i was we were out smoking cigs at the time five years haven't haven't smoked one just nice. saying but uh yeah thank you thank you uh but we were outside smoking and it was he was like dude we've been a band for like four years and like this is this is what we're doing on friday night like 
And I think that that was like the kind of beginning of the end of like that project. So mm. that's, that's like the one that like, kind of like really, really sticks with me. And uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm sure it that, makes you like want to do better now. Like, you know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. get you more motivated to like, take it seriously. Yeah. This was 2000. Mike. 2013 maybe mike were you in steamroller yet uh when uh for timber fest when Corey and i got in the fight with the guy oh and then knocked out the window that was literally like a month before i joined that band or like two oh, months it's not even worth bringing up but that was i would say if you had been in the band then i i would have i would wager you to listen to that as the worst show ever that was <laughs> yeah i i would have definitely let kyle talk about that a one. fest a fest of like 20 local bands playing in some hillbilly's backyard in the woods on a all the vocals coming out of a, like a a stereo that has like a microphone or like a like a boom box with a microphone into it and it was and then it of course resulted in like fighting because everybody was drunk and it was like i was there watching that band but i couldn't remember if you were in it or not so i was like man that probably had to be the worst show but yeah <laughs> you weren't in yeah, it. no, that was that was before I joined. There was a, a whole other. Debacle. So Kyle would, Kyle would list that as the worst show ever. Yeah, yeah, Kyle would. Perfect. So you guys, oh, we have, lost. Uh, we lost Jeremy. Oh, there oh, he's he is. Back. I'm, I'm back. So you guys have hoodies, shirts, and vinyl all over at uh, smartpunkshop.com. Uh, do y'all have any merch anywhere else? Like your own personal? We have side, a big or? cart. We have a big cartel. Oh, you do? And, uh, that's, that's got long sleeves on it, shirts, and uh, what's left of our uh, EP, what's left of the 7-inch. So, What's that um, uh, That link? I think it's just woundedtouch.bigcartel.com, right? Is that how those, that how those so. work? Okay. Let me I'll, see. Uh, I'll make sure to uh, get that in the... Uh... Um. So yeah, let's uh, send yeah, this off it. with the uh, with your album of the year for uh, last year. Or if something's caught your eye this year, go ahead and say that one. What's yeah? What do you, what was yours? What was your guys' like, Jeremy and Mike? What album of the year? Yeah, for um, last year. If something cool's caught caught your eye this year, I can't. I heard it late. It was actually the day after I made my like top ten list. Um, I I. I listened to uh, Cersei's yeah. uh, album that came out. Oh. Um, I think that was probably my album of the year. Hmm. I, I haven't heard of them. I, I know Cersei's a character from a uh, fucking the title, but... that one show, but uh, but what? yeah, that was a fantastic album. Okay, I need to check uh, out. For me, it was um, Spectral Wound for sure. That's Spectral, a dope one too. The, the Spectral Wound record. I'm actually I can't remember the name of oh a Diabolic Thirst. I couldn't remember the name of it. God, that record made me fall black back in love with black metal. That is a dope record. I'm trying to think what my other one was. I think my number two was um it was either Jarhead Fertilizer or it was uh, yeah. some some awesome like metalcore mathcore record came out last year that was like really high on my list too. I can't remember what the hell it was now, but um, yeah, Spectral Wound and then the, uh, the the Cold Cave EP that came out. I think those were my two last year for sure. Okay. Yeah, Failures, uh, Wild Type Droid, that album. I don't. It's either I'd say that's like two or three, but I'd say that's an easy one of my album of the years for sure. Yeah. What about you, Michael? Mine was a little bit everywhere, I think. I mean, like, I really enjoyed that Mastodon record that came out, like, last year. The Blood Moon, I guess, with Chelsea Wolf, I, like, listened to a lot. Uh, Beach Fossils, like, released, like, a piano record that I, like, I really liked. I can't, like, there's, yeah, it's just kind of, like, all over the place, you know? Um, but Album of the Year... Yeah, I, man, figured I, just, it'd be, I figured it'd be the Deftones record that came out last year for you. Which one? The Deftones record. I figured. Yeah, yeah, that one. That one was. That one's okay. It was better than than Gore. Wait, Gore, did that album. come out last year or the year before? I think it was like Holmes came out like what last year. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, four Year Health record was great too, dude. Hell yeah, Four Year Health is dope. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. All right, yeah, I enjoy that Structures record a lot too. I know that that came out this year. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, is there anything else you guys would like to say, or should you just head out to the outro? No, uh, no? thanks for thanks for having us, man. Uh, yeah, dude, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, if you're looking for a heavy as fuck record, you should check out American Anxiety. I think I got it right that time. American Anxiety. You did, uh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> the, Nailed it. The, the debut album from Wounded Touch, which dropped last month through Smart Punk Records. Uh, find their stuff at SmartPunkShop.com. Uh, you guys are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Bandcamp, YouTube, all streaming platforms. Cartel, which again will be down in the description. Um, am I missing any kind of social media stuff, or is that it? Uh, I think you guys are. Oh, I know we're trying to get on. I know we're trying to figure out TikTok. I know that, that's okay. I'm getting more and more bands mentioning how old TikTok. We are. <laughs> All right, y'all yeah, gonna to start really doing the challenges and stuff, or yeah. y'all gonna start doing challenges and stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I don't even venture onto it, but it's a, I know it's a big video. It's big for video at this point, so we're we're gonna do a lot of video content just to specifically dump it there. Yeah. I'm just. We'll see. I'm sure we won't figure it out, and we'll have an account that has like 50 followers, and nothing will come of it. But you know, <laughs> no, I got one made for uh, the Sound That Ends Creation actually, and like just posting videos, you get like crazy amounts of views, like no followers or whatever. And I got like 600 views on my first video, something like that. It was crazy. The TikTok yeah, because I think it, I think it just popped up in people's, and like you don't have to follow people to end up in their uh, in their uh, yeah. queue, so. Yeah, like I, feed. I don't know how <laughs> some of those feed. people found found us on there, but that was pretty funny. That, yeah, uh, we've been getting shared on TikTok. Oh, nice. So. Okay. I don't know why, but <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how, it's but <laughs> it's going on. Uh, as for me, join my channel, follow so you always know when I go live. You can also sub to get access to the interviews before they hit YouTube and other streaming platforms, as well as get some exclusive emotes. Uh, you can also uh, sub for free by attaching an Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. It's like taking five bucks from Jeff Bezos' pocket and putting it in mine. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. YouTube folks, if you enjoyed the video, please tickle the notification bell. Don't forget to subscribe. It's a little. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. It's a great way to support me for free. Check out my music, The Sound Ends Creation, at thesoundthatendscreation.bandcamp.com. Uh, my new album, Boomers, Zoomers, Desperate Coomers, is out now. Uh, my next guest is UK ba UK based band Helpless. Join us this Sunday the tenth. They rule. Dude, they're fucking sick. Uh, join us this so Sunday the tenth at two p.m. Central for the live cast. That's two p.m. Central. I know it's a weird time, but two p.m. Central. Uh, but yeah, thanks for being here, guys. Hope you had a good time. Oh yeah, thank you for having us. Dude, yeah, thank you for having us. Absolutely. And thank you guys for watching and listening.